So what's going on, folks? Two minute warning. Gary, back at you again. We got Tim, we got Santos, we got Mike, we got Josh. We're ready to get this going. We go. What up, what up, right, so before we start, fella, before we start, I want to ask you one, guys one question. Um, do I owe any, any of you guys any type of money? Josh, uh, I don't owe you no money, right? No, no, Mike, no, no, no. Santo, Sean, I don't owe you no money at all, right? We're good from the play I predict for last year. I, 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 I want to do a payment plan with you guys if I do, please. I don't want, I don't want no, no fighting. No. Don't put your finger in my face. You still owe me a beer. Don't be tapping nobody in the door, man. Would be yes, yes, listen, listen. But hold on, but, but Sean, I mean, excuse me, Mike. But when I see you, let me give you the beer first before you before you break my jaw. Good? I mean, don't put your finger in my face, though. Just don't put your finger in my face, though. No, I, I won't. I won't. Just saying that. I, I, I won't. But, fellas, um, <laughs> this is about the most crackhead stuff I've ever heard. And, and you know, we talking about a fourth-round linebacker, I.K. and Polly. That's, that's how you say his name. Goes up. And breaks Geno Smith's jaw over six hundred dollars. I mean, I know six hundred dollars in our world is a lot of money. Six hundred dollars in their world, I mean, damn, I could imagine that was a dollar food stamp or something. You we're talking about he broke his jaw. How do you guys how do you guys think about that? What do you guys think about that? Look, man, some people just don't want money. You know, like, but I mean, I understand. Look, I don't understand his mentality because for me, my priorities never leave my side. Like, if this dude is being disrespectful to me, I'm like, but I need my check. I'm not punching the starting quarterback to get my check. So let's just first, we have to realize we're not even in the same mind frame as this dude. He's probably juiced up. He's probably really angry. He's probably coming from a very angry background. Hey. B, if you know the type of people that you play with, this is why I put it on Geno Smith. If you know the type of people you play with, you know people come from hard backgrounds, don't be a jerk. Don't put your finger in the, in the guy's face and be like, I'm the quarterback of the Jets. Eat my nuts. I mean, like, if you keep on doing that to people who are real street, people who come from that life, you're going to get you gonna get cracked eventually. Right. <laughs> the whole the whole thing is hilarious to me. I mean, it, ever in history has there ever been a scuffle between? We're not talking training camp scuffles, between, you know, like a Cam Newton type thing. Has a quarterback ever in history gotten like a broken nose from another teammate or anything like that, even remotely close to this? This whole thing is just absurd. It would probably be um, RG three, where his teammates don't protect him. And he gets pummeled during the game. I mean, that's <laughs> Seriously, that's the only thing I can honestly think of. And at this point in time, it's like, are you really, you're really gonna risk your career to punch a dude in the face over six? To us, that's like what sixty bucks, probably. I mean, this is ridiculous. But on the other hand, we have to look at it from the other point. How are you not able to pay off a, a fund of six hundred bucks to a teammate within a span of four years? Let's be real. There's some responsibility issue on Gino's side, and I think that speaks more volumes on his uh, character as a leader. And he, that's not a franchise QB, in my opinion. I think uh, he honestly did him a favor by knocking him in the jaw. If that's how it's going to be. Um, and honestly, he, he just got scooped up by Rex Ryan. So, how is it the wrong choice? I mean, how can we really say he did something stupid? He's not out of a job right now. And you know what? Uh, Let me just this really quick. I mean, I don't think he just punched him for six hundred dollars. There's right. got to be something more there. I mean, maybe it is just six hundred dollars. I'm like, really, just six hundred dollars, dude? But I don't think they like each other for a long time. Yeah, I, I can mean, picture Gino having that type of attitude. Lack responsibility to not pay that six hundred dollars in the span of four years. But why didn't he spend um pay that six hundred dollars in four years? 
Maybe they had like little beef with each other, and Gino started acting like you know little antsy pants. Like I'm not gonna pay you six hundred dollars because you 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 looked at me wrong two years ago, and and then he's like, dude, but I paid you six hundred dollars, pay me back, and maybe there's something else with them, and that was probably the break. You know how to sum it up? You know how to sum it up? Mel Scaff said it perfect. The one straw that broke the camel's back has the secret. The million other straws underneath it. Yeah. My my thing is this. We, we joke about this is ghetto, that is ghetto. When I heard this story, I thought to myself, this is the most ghettoest thing I've ever heard. Tapping your teammate's door for 600 bucks. I mean, I, I, what, but why? I, I'm just confused because you know Smith, yo, 600 bucks, bro. That's chump change, dude. Say the man. I mean, I think Geno Smith probably just has his attitude like, I pay you, Jack. I don't give a shit. Six hundred dollars, so what? Get over it. But the other dude probably said, you know what? I'm tired of your attitude. Just boom, snuff the dude. And you know what? If that's the case, Geno Smith is an ass. He deserves to get snuffed. Well, 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 I'm gonna tell you this. I think the Jets are better <laughs> off. I think the Jets are better off right now without Geno. To me, Geno Smith will no longer be a franchise quarterback. He will no longer get the respect because because you're a quarterback and a, a teammate who has really no name told you just knocked you out. You yeah. lost the respect. I'm sorry. He, he is done. Peyton Manning will never get checked. No, no franchise quarterback will ever get checked. But I'm going to tell you this. They're not a bad team. Fitzpatrick to me, was going to be the starter because Chan Gailey and him go way back and the Jets are still in good shape. Not in I bad shape. They're going to be in better shape. Okay. I think, I, 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 think this hurts, I think this hurts Geno Smith more than it does the Jets because Geno Smith needed these handful of games, especially with Tom Brady potentially facing the four-game ban, to prove that, hey, I can do something. I can be a leader of this team. I can put the Jets in contention to try to take the division away. Well, that's not going to happen, so that, that's going to hurt him more than them. I honestly think Ryan Fitzpatrick is a better fit for them short-term. Not long-term, but he's a better fit than Geno is. They're still going to have a quarterback problem, and they need to get that addressed. So Geno's yeah, going to like, start with the answer. I just never I mean, it. here's the thing. Here's the thing, guys. I've, I've always been, eh, I've been meant to know on Geno Smith, not because of his talent. Not because of his ability. Honestly, I think he has a great set of wheels. I think, honestly, his upside, he could have been a poor man's Aaron Rodgers if he really worked that hard. He has a great arm. He has athleticism to get out the pocket. But the problem was, with me, was everything that would get him there, he seemed to not want to do. He seemed to not set his alarm and miss meetings. He seemed to look woefully unprepared in multiple games when he knew he was the starter. So, like, that's very telling. Like, you can't change a leopard's spots. So while he probably would have faked the funk to get that contract this year, he probably would have went real hard this year. He probably would have had a good year. But, see, that's even worse because if he got that contract, he would have been garbage the year after because that's just his mentality. He's very entitled. Very entitled. Like, I don't... Feel it. So my thing is, though, another thing I've been trying to tell people from the jump, everyone was talking about Mariota and Winston, and no one was talking about Bryce Petty. And I think if but, Patrick could hold the fort down for a while, give that kid Petty a chance to see what happens. They, they might. Yeah. It's true. They might take quarterback and Petty. But no, no, but, 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 but Josh, you got, Josh, you, you got it. Josh, you have to say anything, Josh? I just don't think they want to so throw uh, Bryce Petty or a, a rookie quarterback into the division right away. When they, they probably the Jets right now, they probably actually think they have a contention with their defense and uh, a pretty good set of receivers right now. I mean, they're a decent offense. They're not great. They're nothing you know that you want to draft right away. But honestly, they're contenders, and especially with it being wide open with the Brady thing. And you don't know what Miami's going to equate to their height right now, but you do, you don't know what they're going to be. They could be 8-8 eight and eight again. So, honestly, the Jets, they think they have contention right now. They don't want to put Petty. They wanted to go Geno, I believe. He, he finished the uh, season 
strong in the last four games, had one of the best QBRs. I think he was coming in entitled, like Michael was saying. He does have the arrogance to him. That's what makes him just a, a not a leader in a franchise Q. I don't think he was the long term for them, but he probably could have done some damage this year. Yeah, I think he would have done some damage. But, but, but you see, this, now here's the thing. I, I mean, even though I still think Fitz Patrick would have got the job because he knows the office with Chan Gailey, but this is the year that Geno Smith had to take advantage of, okay, he didn't have a good offense at all. He was not surrounded by And when we're talking about Mariota versus Winston versus Petty, both, first of all, Winston got a good offense. He's surrounded by talent. Mariota, I mean, he got some – I mean – Listen, he got some guys here and there. I, I, not, he's not in the greatest shape, but when you look at Geno Smith. This is the top. This is the first time in his three years that he has an offense. Brandon Marshall, Eric Decker, the the wide receiver they dropped out of out of Ohio State. That's three times better than we had only with, with Curly. I mean, so you know, I, I'm not gonna say that. I, I, I and again, it's like Fitzpatrick, the same thing. Fitzpatrick this is the first offense. That Fitzpatrick's gonna have is more solid than that he ever had since um the Tennessee Titans, the Houston Texans, okay, since the Buffalo Bills. Both these guys got good offenses now, but I just think Fitzpatrick would have won it because he's more familiar with it because of Chan Gailey. The Jets are gonna, the, to me the Jets will be fighting for a playoff spot with Miami Dolphins. I think the Patriots will be out. Buffalo Bills got more of a quarterback issue than the Jets. Bryce Petty you just need to sit back there and just learn the Changeli offense. I I think Bryce Petty might might I think Bryce Petty will be a good quarterback in two years. In That's two years. Point. That's my point. That's exactly my point. That's why I'm in two I'm years we'll be a good quarterback. I'm not talking this season. I mean this season you're right. Fitzpatrick he this is his shot. If he really wants to play shot. and play good, he can do it now, get a hey. three year extension and do the damn thing. Listen. Did, did we not all look at Chris Patrick's stats last year? He almost threw for 3,000 yards. He had, I believe, 17 touchdowns with eight interceptions as a backup. And they try to run the ball most of the whole time. So this guy, I mean, listen, he, he as long as he can move the chains without making that much of a mistake and they, and they just got a good defense, I think they're all right. I really, really do think they're all right. Yeah, you know, I mean, just hopefully he don't owe nobody no money. As long as he don't owe nobody no money, he's good. <laughs> well, not, well he can't, IK is on the on the bills though. So, but yeah, I, I again like I never really saw the Jets as an offensive juggernaut. So you're right. I and I think I think Geno probably would have been real prepared for the first four weeks. But I'm telling you, man, just like when people say Tebow can throw now, but here's the problem. After the season wanes on and you take them hits, and you fall back into old habits. And you talk about the offense you know had, but let's be real. There's times where he was turning the wrong way to hand off the rock. That ain't the offense. Yeah, that's that's just you. That's just that's you true. not being prepared. So I can't really say it was all the – I could say he didn't put the offense as good as it can be because he was obviously unprepared. There's sometimes where if you're not trenching the lead, you can't tell. But like, there's sometimes where anybody and their mama could know that boy wasn't ready to play, and that boy <laughs> was not ready to play. How about this, y'all? Do do we feel is it messed up that this kid I K got signed by the Buffalo Bills? I mean, let, let's all be Rex Ryan for a second, behind closed doors with no cameras. What do you think what was going on in Rex Ryan's mind when he signed IK? That's the really? only reason. He just got really lucky that Rex Ryan ended up going to a divisional team as a head coach. He's lucky that Rex Ryan is the one that drafted him, and he's lucky that Rex Ryan wants to bring him over to give him a chance. But honestly, I think he just wants him for some insight on Todd Bowles. He's been doing some drills with him for about, you know, two months or so now. You know, what's Todd Bowles? What's the scoop? Yeah. You're a good kid. I know you're a good kid. That's why I drafted you. You know, if you promise to turn things around, we'll work things out. You know, we'll, we'll try to get you on a roster spot. It's a business. He doesn't have to promise. You know, it's he's just giving him some confidence. But at the same time, if, is he going to make the 53? Probably not. But right now, Rex can say, yo, you're my boy. You know, I brought you here to give you another chance. I know you're not really like that. 
So let's work together. We'll try to get you on a 53, but, you know, it's not going to happen. So obviously try to get the resources out of the kid while you can. Bring in another body for competition. Patriots I'll tell you this. I just, <laughs> I, I, just I, th I, think, I think what he did was behind closed door, he was like, my son, come over here, son. Come to daddy. He goes, how did it feel to push the shit? Out of him. How do you feel? Felt so good, right? Felt so good, right? Gave him a kiss in the cheek. Yo, go suit up and practice tomorrow. Here's a jersey. Then we went behind the. Then we then went by the press conference. Like, you know what? He, he's a good kid. You know, and um, I don't. I think he learned his lesson. And you know, you, you, it's not. It's not. It's not good to fight. And we all know. His back, uh, Rex Ryan's background check, especially with his daddy, how they were with his bounty hunt and all this kind of stuff. He loved that. And I had a feeling, for some reason, he would be, he would, um, be reunited with Rex Ryan. But you know, I think Gino Smith is out. Yeah. I think I think Gino is out. And, and I, just like what Josh said, Josh said it right. He's not a franchise quarterback. It, not even not even um responsible when you, you owe money and you can't even – Six hundred dollars. This is over six hundred dollars that you owe. I mean, that's some real crackhead moves. No disrespect, but I mean, I, it's a perfect Rex Ryan move. He can use it for the info, and he'll get a shit and giggles. Hey, I got the guy who snuck the shit out of Dino Why not? I stick it to the guy. He sees him in Washington. Listen, if that was Eli Manning, and and I can would have said, "Yo, Eli, you owe me money." Eli, I'm like, oh, he's like that. Okay, yo, let me, let me, let me, you know what this really is, though, guys? This is Patriots 101, gentlemen. This is Patriots 101. How many times have the Patriots taken players that just were cut or just mysteriously fell off the team for either be a drama or no reason at all and then just signed them on these ridiculously short contracts? This is what the NFL does. Just for a little bit of edge, it's worth it. And Rex can say this is one of my guys. Somebody who will, wait for it, punch you right in the jaw. There you go. <laughs> well, you know what? On that note, we got to end the show. I mean, well, sorry, not the show, this down. And now this down is, uh, is over, folks. Catches in second and five. We'll be right back. But Sean, why are you close your fistful when you, when you